Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and environment. So in this session, we are going to learn about something very interesting that is related to geomorphology part of geography. And it is also a unique association between geography and geometry. So it's called tetrahedral hypothesis. So as we know that many scientists have been looking forward to the distributions of ocean, continents and shape of the earth right from the ancient to the modern age in geography. So there were few people who linked geographical inquiry with geometrical principles. So the principles of geometry that is about the shape, about the size, about the structure, all these things were important in terms of explanation of how these continents and oceans were shaped and in which way they were located as they are located in present. So to understand this, one of the early scholars that is Lothian Green, he proposed this tetrahedral hypothesis in order to explain the distribution of ocean and land, right? So today we are going to learn about him. But remember, before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about tetrahedral hypothesis. Now what is this tetrahedral hypothesis? It's basically one of the hypothesis that is linked with geometrical principle, right? So Lothian Green in 1875 was one of the first person who was English adventurer and merchant and also a geologist who thought about this particular theory that how he could explain the distribution of continents and ocean on Earth's surface. So he proposed this tetrahedral hypothesis according to the best knowledge that he had. So it was based on the geometry principle. Now let's understand a little about geometry. So as you know that ancient Greek the word is geo that is earth and metron is measurement. So geometry is talking about measurements of the earth. That is where it was concerned in the old times and again in the modern age geometry was part of mathematics, arithmetic and it was used for discussion on properties of space and that is where geography comes into the picture, right? So they were related to distance, shape, size, relative position of figures. So also there is a term called geometer. If you know this, a mathematician who works in the field of geometry is also called geometer. So all these geometers were involved in understanding the shape of the earth. Also remember because earth is part of the nature and there is this idea of teleology where we say there is a purpose behind the creation of earth and every other feature. So it was thought that it must be geometrical because geometrical talks about precise shape and size right about the structure. So until 19th century geometry was almost exclusively devoted to Euclidean geometry. Remember the ideas of point line plane distance angle surface curve all these fundamental concepts came forward and the notions gradually changed right. So what happens geometry becomes one of the important principles whenever we talk about distribution of shape of the earth that is in terms of oceans, land, mountains, plateaus, plains, right? All these divisions of earth's different different features, right? That's why in geomorphology, Lothian Green's tetrahedral hypothesis, which by the way now is obsolete, became important pioneer work, right? So now let's elaborate and understand how it came into being. So before this hypothesis came, there was another geometric hypothesis, which is dodecahedral hypothesis. And now remember dodeca is a word for 12. So dodeca is a Greek word, which means 12. And L.E.D. Beaumont is one of the French scholars, French geologists, who actually made this particular image of the earth. Right, that was in 12 dimensions. So dodeca. So mountain ranges basis of the structure was evolved in 1852, which became one of the foundation principles of or the thought process of this Lothian Green principle later on. Right. So what we observe the publications here in 1857, Lothian Green published the cause of the pyramidal form of outline of southern extremities of great continents and peninsula of the globe. And in 1875, he published vestiges of molten globe as exhibited in the figure 
on the earth that is volcanic action and physiography when he worked on the volcanoes in the Hawaii Islands and others. So these are two major publications in which he discusses about this tetrahedral hypothesis and here is the structure. It was basically an attractive hypothesis of that time, right? So remember, it was enjoyed to a considerable extent by many geologists and many other scholars. And Lothian Green's hypothesis of 1875 paved way of thinking towards the shape of the earth also towards the distribution of land and ocean. So if you observe this particular southern polar region, it was described in this particular way and this tetrahedral collapse was discussed in this particular image, right? So his hypothesis is based on characteristics of a tetrahedron, which is what? It's a solid body having four equal plane surfaces, each of which is an equilateral triangle, right? So that's important. And he based his hypothesis on the following two basic principles of geometry. So what are the two basic principles of geometry? A sphere is that body which contains largest volume with respect to its surface area. And a tetrahedron is that body which contains least volume with respect to its surface area. These are the two geometrical principles that were important. And after many experiments, Lothian Green opened that a sphere if subjected to uniform pressure now remember here the concept is if it is subjected to uniform pressure that is the word to catch here on all its sides then only there will be a collapse and it will be transformed into shape of a tetrahedron eventually as you can see in this particular image. So according to Lothian Green when the earth was originated it was in the form of a sphere right and gradually when it was cooling down it actually took the shape of a tetrahedron in terms of distribution of these particular continents and oceans. So if you look into this particular image of tetrahedron you look at this particular American side. So here is one triangle if you observe then you have this particular triangle then you have this particular triangle here right African side then Asian side and one which is not visible that is on the other side. So this is what we observe as tetrahedron structure of the earth right. So first the outer part of the earth cooled down. So remember when earth cooled down from its molten state the outer part cooled first and thus was formed the crust but inner part rem remained in the molten state right. So consequently what happened the inner part of the earth was subjected to more contraction gradually and due to continued cooling and thus there was marked reduction in the volume as well right. So since the volume reduced what happened the upper part that is the crustal part already which were solidified or cooled hence it could not be subjected to further contraction and this resulted in possible gap between upper and inner parts of the earth according to this hypothesis. So consequently what we observe that upper part collapsed on the inner part because upper part became solid earlier and inner part was still in the molten state and earth began to assume a shape of tetrahedron in terms of its distribution of continents and oceans right in terms of ridges and valleys if you observe. So this is his hypothesis. Now Lothian Green hypothesis or postulation what we say had particular characteristics of distribution of land and water. So let's observe. It explains following characteristics. First is the dominance of land areas in the northern hemisphere. Now this is very interesting that land areas dominate in the northern hemisphere and water areas in the southern hemisphere right then triangular shape of the continents and oceans as we have already seen in this particular image earlier and situation of contiguous ring of land around the north polar sea and location of south pole in land area that is Antarctica and bounded by water from all sides that's also important then there is something called antipodal arrangement now remember antipode is exactly 90 degree opposite that's what antipode is, right? So antipodal arrangement of continents and oceans. So if on one surface there is continent, just opposite side of it there will be ocean, right? That is what he meant by antipodal arrangement of continents and oceans, right? So largest extent of Pacific Ocean covering one third area of the globe and also location of chain of folded mountains around Pacific Ocean. So all these things were part of his hypothesis on which he tried to explain the physiography of Earth, right? That's important. And Lothian Green also initiated and claimed to see a tetrahedral arrangement in the distribution of the oceans and continents in a way where earth was linked to this particular tetrahedron having four flat faces and standing on one point. Now if you observe in this particular image here. So you have particular positions of Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic Sea and remember the Pacific on other side right. 
and then here on these lines if you see you have what you have the cratons you have particular continents so you have antarctica in the center you have europe here you have canada here you have americas here you have particular asia right so this is how it was located now if you observe the upper flat face represents arctic ocean right so this is important upper flat face and then three faces represent pacific atlantic and indian ocean so this is what his model was to explain where one location of a particular ocean is and how in between there are different ridge rising and different mountains also right and how continents and oceans are placed in this way but remember this theory was also criticized for a lot many things so tetrahedral hypothesis if we say it throws light on problems of this distribution of continents and ocean understanding definitely it was one of its kind so that work was very important and also it successfully explains the characteristic features of distributional pattern of the present day continents as well but because of certain basic defects and errors this hypothesis is not acceptable right so why it is not acceptable to scientific community is important that it is argued that balance of earth in the form of tetrahedron but remember while rotating on an apex cannot be maintained so while rotation it will not be maintained right secondly the earth is rotating so rapidly on its axis that spherical earth cannot be converted into tetrahedron so this was proved right then third that hypothesis believes more or less in the permanency of continents and ocean basins it does not say that ocean basins or continents can shift but what happened when continental drift theory came all these concepts were now gone right so it was invalidated because of the advent of continental drift theory so plate tectonic theory and continental drift theory when it came in 1960s sea floor spreading came right so when all these new concepts came what happened this particular theory tetrahedral hypothesis ran obsolete so now it's not validated but yes we remember tetrahedral hypothesis for being first of its kind to actually throw light on the distribution of oceans and continents that's why it's very important for us so now that we have understood in details about this tetrahedral hypothesis of lothian green in the sessions to come we'll be talking on certain more theories and also certain principles for example gk gilbert's work we'll be talking about arthur holmes work and several others so if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel and also remember to share the videos with others as well so stay tuned stay safe and all the best wishes